What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again and today people, today, what a wild and crazy world we live in. I mean, right? It wasn't, what, two weeks ago that it was announced that Xbox was buying Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion. And today, I roll out of bed, I get onto the Twitter net, and I'm greeted with the news that Sony has acquired Bungie Studios for $3.6 billion. <laughs> Say what? In their press release, Bungie states, Bungie joined Sony Interactive Entertainment, SIE. We believe that games have limitless potential, and that to do anything worthwhile in entertainment, we must bet big on our vision, on our studio, and on our incredible team of trusted creators who build unforgettable worlds that truly matter to people. In SIE, we have found a partner who unconditionally supports us in all we are and who wants to accelerate our vision to create generation-spanning entertainment, all while preserving the creative independence that beats in Bungie's heart. Like us, SIE believes that game worlds are only the beginning of what our IPs can become. Together, we share a dream of creating and fostering iconic franchises that unite friends around the world, families across generations, and fans across multiple platforms and entertainment mediums. Today, Bungie begins our journey to become a global multimedia entertainment company, Creative Freedom. Since taking flight in 1991, Bungie has always charted the future of our own star map, a path that is driven by our people and for our community. We are continuing that journey with new worlds in development and we can't wait to share them with you. With SIE, the potential for our universe is unlimited. Our future games will take bold steps into unexplored spaces for Bungie, continue to push the boundaries of what is possible, and will always be built on a foundation of creating meaningful, lifelong friendships and memories. We remain in charge of our destiny. We will continue to independently publish and creatively develop our games. We will continue to drive one unified Bungie community. Our games will continue to be where our community is, wherever they choose to play. With SIE support, the most immediate change you will see is an acceleration in hiring talent across the entire studio to support our ambitious vision. If this speaks to you and you want to help us put a dent in the universe, we are hiring across all disciplines for Destiny 2 and all of the worlds beyond. Three decades and counting. What makes our worlds come to life is our community and our people in the studio. Our people are the soul of Bungie. Empowered by our people, we have pushed the boundaries of what we thought was possible and transformed who we are as a company. Over the last 30 years, the inviting worlds we've built have turned into thriving communities. And that community is the true magic. These communities have taken Bungie beyond games. They have forged lifelong bonds and humbled us with the real, meaningful good they drive within us and the world. More than anything, SIE understands that our people and our community are both the priority and the heart of our success, and are willing to stand alongside us as we continue to use our platform to drive action towards a more welcoming and equitable world. Our goal is to build a place where the world's most creative and talented people can come do their best work, no matter who they are, where they're from, or how they identify. That's the real dent in the universe we want to make. The one we want to last beyond us. Be a part of this future with us. See you starside. Now, longtime Destiny fans might remember this is more or less the same deal Bungie had with Activision. However, at that time, it was just a publishing deal. Make no mistake, Sony now owns Bungie. The motive to what seems like a fairly one-sided acquisition in favor of Bungie, not Sony, at least on the face of it, according to Christopher Drang, the head of GameIndustry.biz, is for Bungie to help boost their, Sony's, own ability to make live service multi-platform games. Equally, Sony unlocks the potential to Bungie to strengthen its technical capabilities and the prospect of taking its games to movies and TV. 
We know that movie and TV adaptations of their universes is something that Bungie is actively seeking, as Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy were, last year, moved from the Heads of Destiny to a non-existent at the time multimedia wing of Bungie. And Christopher's tweet seems to not just fall in line with Bungie's statement, but their Q&A, which I will cover in a moment. That being said, Bungie are being somewhat deceptive in framing this as a partnership. This is not a partnership. Sony now owns Bungie. That means if Sony wanted to, they could walk in, close down the entire studio, lay everybody off tomorrow, and Bungie would be shit out of luck. They won't do that, of course, because you don't do that with a $3.6 billion investment that you've acquired to help you build the infrastructure to create your own live service game platforms going forward. But it is important to remember that Sony owns Bungie. This isn't a publishing deal like it was with Activision, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. So what does this actually mean for the future of Bungie and Destiny? Well, in reality, the only answer we have is... We'll see. However, Bungie did share a Q&A. Question. As a Destiny 2 player, does Bungie becoming part of PlayStation have any immediate impact on how I play and experience Destiny 2? No. Our commitment to Destiny 2 as a multi-platform game with crossplay remains unchanged. We want you to play the Witch Queen on February 22nd, 2022 on the platform of your choice. Question. Will the Destiny 2 experience on non-PlayStation platforms be impacted by Bungie becoming part of PlayStation. No, we want to maintain the same great experience you already have on your platform of choice. Question, will any announced seasons, events, packs, or expansions be changed or impacted by Bungie becoming part of PlayStation? No, Bungie retains full creative independence for our games and our community. Our plans for the Light and Dark Saga are unchanged, all the way through the final shape in 2024. Question, Will Destiny 2 The Witch Queen include any platform exclusives? Every player should have an amazing Destiny experience, no matter where you choose to play. Question. Will cross-platform features like cross-save, cross-play, the Destiny 2 companion app, or third-party apps like Destiny Item Manager, DIM, be changed or removed? No. Bungie's commitment to cross-platform play and social features remains unchanged. We believe that games are the best shared with friends wherever they choose to play. We will continue to invest in new features and platforms. Question. Bungie has future games in development. Will they now become PlayStation exclusives? No. We want the worlds that we are creating to extend to anywhere people play games. We will continue to be self-published, creatively independent, and we will continue to drive one unified Bungie community. Question. I play Destiny on Steam, Xbox, or Stadia. Will my platform still be supported? Yes. So, while well, I've seen some chatter that this is a reaction to Microsoft's acquisition of Activision, I highly doubt it. While it's not impossible that Sony caught wind of the acquisition months and months ago and started looking for a counter, it's highly improbable. These deals take months, if not years, to close. However, regardless of Bungie's assurances that they are still self-publishing, and that nothing will change, and that they're only going to get bigger, the reality is, Sony owns them. And it's not impossible that if, for example, Microsoft pulled Call of Duty from the PlayStation platforms, we could see Sony retaliate by pulling Destiny. That said, it really does seem like Sony is trying to branch out with games as a service on multiple platforms. All of these caveats and exceptions are basically up to the whim of Sony. But, and I want to be clear on this, you don't buy a studio for its talent and start throwing your weight around doing things things that that talent doesn't like, and driving that talent away. It would be very counterintuitive for Sony to go back on their word, because happy employees are employees that are still working at Bungie, and employees that are still working at Bungie are employees building your games-as-a-service platform for all your other games and helping you build better cross-play support. So while Sony could probably do whatever they wanted with Bungie, I don't think they're going to make Bungie regret this deal. It's not in their best interest. Now will that necessity and relationship be reevaluated in, say, 10 years, when Sony has its games-as-a-service model in place? Who knows? 
but that's a bridge we'll cross when and if we ever come to it. Now we come to one of the biggest questions that I've been asked by you wonderful people over on the Twitter net. Given that Bungie now has the support of Sony, do I think statements made by Luke Smith about Destiny 2 never having another Forsaken size DLC still hold true? So yes and no. It depends. Bungie's biggest issue with creating Forsaken sized expansions was always manpower. When they left Activision, they lost their two support studios, Vicarious Visions and High Moon Studio. High Moon, as many will remember, did a lot of heavy lifting on Forsaken. A lot of the stuff that will be leaving in February with the arrival of Witch Queen was, more or less, content created by High Moon. With Activision, Activision was partnered with Bungie for mutual profit gain and had support studios that they could share. To make sure that Destiny content was created in a reasonable time frame. To make sure that Destiny content was created in a reasonable time frame. With Sony, however, the acquisition is, if Christopher is to be believed, for Bungie to help Sony develop technologies to create games as a service platforms. While Destiny 2 is a nice cherry on top of all of that, it's not really why Sony bought Bungie. They bought Bungie for access to technologies. Bungie fills that live service multiplayer niche that Sony doesn't really have. Bungie has stated that they are now aggressively hiring. So while I do not think that we'll see help in the way of satellite studios like we did with Activision, we will likely see help in the realm of finances. Finances that will allow Bungie to build up the teams necessary to deliver larger pieces of content. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we'll see for taken size DLCs ever again, and certainly not soon. We know the scope of Witch Queen and nothing's going to change that now, but even if Bungie hired 800 new employees, one, that's an enormous undertaking in and of itself. Getting applications, interviewing, vetting, verifying, it's a huge process. And even then, if they hire these 800 new employees specifically to develop Destiny content, those employees still need to be trained on the notoriously hard to work with Tiger Engine tools. So while I do see the hiring and formation of teams over the next year to support Destiny and all its various accoutrements, I wouldn't count on Lightfall being a forsaken size DLC. Final Shape, on the other hand? Well, that could be bigger. That said, there's also the question of how Bungie will deliver that new content. Over the last few years, the base $40 expansion has gotten smaller and smaller, and you guessed it, smaller. And we see with Witch Queen that things like dungeons, which started out as a standard or free feature, are now no longer part of the base DLC or even the Season Pass offering. They're sold separately. It's not unimaginable that the $40 expansions will stay around the same size that they are now, with more a la carte experiences being offered to players as additional purchases in the future. Think more content along the lines of the 30th anniversary. This honestly makes the most sense, as we know that Bungie has a roadmap through the final shape, and to change any of that could cause developmental problems along the way for those core experiences. But additional side content? New dungeons? New PvP maps? New loot? That's not unrealistic. All in all, this looks like an absolute win for the players, if Bungie does manage to keep their autonomy within Sony. More money means more resources, means more people, means more content. It's a win all around. All while removing that annoying excuse that a multi-billion dollar corporation was a small indie studio. So nothing could be expected of them. Which of course is a win for my comment section. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. But above all else, stay frosty.